One of the most important part nowadays of account building is weapons, and you'll often see this being the deciding factor in high-level PvP in terms of determining who wins and loses rally defenses and stuff like CCS or AC, and it's quite a delicate topic, it's quite intimidating in terms of determining just how much weapons contribute. And there isn't that much content out there about this, I've noticed. So I thought I'd try and provide some for the community. So I've done videos before on base attack specifically in quite heavy detail, trying to help visualize how much that will provide you and how much it will help you in strengthening your account. But something that is potentially more abstract in terms of visualizing the effectiveness of are the weapons in terms of their levels and how much the improvements to the Commander Awakening effects get improved throughout. So if we just look at something like Snow Wolf, if you click on Increase and look at the star increases, obviously this is better per each star, but if you, if I just asked you right now, like, how much better is this going to make your, your Cav March or something? It's, it's such a weird abstract thing to think of in that sense that you really have to do theoretical maths to to try and figure it out in terms of comparing it to other frames of reference where you can actually visualize it at least so i'm going to do that now and probably make a series of videos going over at least the most popular most used uh, most wanted weapons in the game and sort of look into how good they are how worthwhile they are to upgrade and yeah, maybe at the end of all this, probably make a tier list on which are the best weapons in the game in terms of how much they improve their commander's awakening ability. So the one I'm going to start with today is Salma's weapon. This is because when she first came out, this is one of the more desired weapons I noticed, one of the more hyped ones. It was met with a lot of positive feedback. Uh, a lot of people run female builds. It was the first synergy introduced to the game realistically so a lot of people who stopped spending have a lot of female commanders female dragon skills and whatnot on their account so they naturally default towards that something like four star daenerys if you're bridging into the f5 market tends to be the most popular first pick as well and she slots right into female builds and of course salma is a staple of the female synergy so i have her whole discord channel on my private discord go over all the specifics of this and yeah let's get into it there will be timestamps in the description if you want to jump around or look at the conclusion or whatnot because this might go on for a little while as i explain everything so her four star ability by default uh, allied commanders allied female commanders have an 80 percent chance to use their active army skill one time directly but the normal attacks of troops belonging to those female commanders will have a 30% chance of missing the enemies in the first 5 seconds. So there are two RNG elements attached to this, and unlocking the weapon to base will eliminate both of these. So the weapon being unlocked to base will be a big improvement already, plus you will be able to roll base attack on it just from having it unlocked, which is perhaps the most important thing here. In terms of the value you're getting from that, the self-inflicted disarm, I think, reads a bit worse than it realistically is because of the first five seconds tooltip. So most of the first five seconds of a fight will be invalidated by movement speed. If we look at a report of mine, uh, something saved like this, I don't know. Uh, both of us have Salma here. There are no other disarms in the fight. Uh, when we look at the battle record, one second starts. There is no normal attacks, obviously, because troops will be moving at this point. The only things that have happened here are one-second castings from Salma. So nothing at one second in terms of the disarm hitting anything. Nothing at two seconds, nothing at three seconds. At four seconds, there's no normal attacks either. So that's four of those five seconds listed here that are basically irrelevant. Then on the fifth second, 
you will have the disarm actually kicking in. So you see here A3 misses, uh, B1 misses, A1 misses. So it's only 20% of the time frame it actually hits where this disarm has any relevance. So that would be 20% of 30%. You can sort of visualize this as a 6% self disarm chance when taking into account uptime. It will be a little bit lower than that when you account for the RNG of it actually proccing also. So somewhere between like 4 and 5% probably, which admittedly is still decently high and getting rid of that will actually add on average a decent bit of damage. Plus the RNG of it actually proccing is very awkward because you can low roll it and have one or zero actives cast at one second. And if you're built female, you're really reliant on early snowball. That's the niche of your build. You want to be getting into early number advantages in fights. So getting rid of that RNG and the risk of not proccing those actives is very, very good. Then when you get into the stars of it, all the stars between 1, 2, and 3 will do will be increasing the damage coefficient of the Salma proc to active casting. Now for me, I think this is the best part of this weapon, and I know when I've seen discussions about this, the most common thing people fixate on is the reproc part of it at 4 star. I don't think this is the best thing about this weapon, and I will explain why near the end I guess. I don't think people fully realize the extent of this due to how it reads. It doesn't read very sexily, because these are very low increments of percentage increases. And when we typically look at commander damage, if we look at a commander, so say Samara herself, uh, at 4 star gold, she'll deal 260% commander damage as her commander damage multiplier. So you'll get 200% from being gold, and then an additional 60% from the awakening stars. When you increase this number normally with something like the strong assault dragon skill, we look here, at uh, 9, this will be plus 20% commander damage. All this will do is take that 260% and add 20 to it to make it 280%. It won't increase that 260% by 20%, which would be another 52% on top of it. It just adds it. It's the same with the castle skins that affect this also. So something like Flaming Throne, if I can find that ba -ba -ba here. So this 30%, it will just take the 260% to 290%. And the Strong Assault on top of that will take it to 310%. It won't multiply by that percentage. So percentage increases, typically, historically, in regards to commander damage, have quite a, a bad reputation. Well, maybe not bad, but just it's not a life-changing or world-changing thing at all. But the terminology used here, I believe, I might be wrong, because I don't actually own this, and this is all theoretical. It's a damage coefficient. So uh, at base, it's 100% damage coefficient. So effectively, what that means is you're just doing full damage. And then at one star, this implies you're putting it through a 1.15 multiplier, and then a 1.3 multiplier, and then a 1.5 multiplier, finally. So that 260%, which was getting added to by something like Flaming Throne to 290%. If you have a 3-star Salma weapon, theoretically, this damage coefficient would take that 260% and multiply it up to 390%. So it would basically be an additional 130% coming from a source such as this Flaming Throne Dragon Skin. That sounds very high. You do have to remember this only affects the Salma one second active castings. It won't affect Layla reprocs off the Salma re uh, one second castings. It won't affect the 10 second active castings or the 20 or the 30 active castings either. But there is a lot of inherent value in snowballing actives for female because I've addressed this in previous videos where if you don't have Salma proc a female at one second, all that will actually do is cause your fourth active casting from that commander to cast at 40 seconds instead of one second. So the logic behind this is, for some reason, I don't know why, it's just the case, except for Daenerys, who has a seven second active 
cooldown because of her 4 star ability. If Salma procs someone at 1 second, it will change the sequencing of their active timings when they cast, and that sequencing will then have the 4th round of, or the 5th round of active castings, in this case, cast at 41 seconds instead of 40, and because of that the fight will already be over. So you'll have the same amount of active castings throughout a fight, be it being Salma procced or not. The difference though, is you will want to be casting actives whilst you have as many troops as possible. So you'll want them being casted earlier, because the more troops you have, the more damage you'll deal of course. So Salma will indirectly increase your commander damage, even if the number of commander actives being cast are, are the same. And I know I've been dismissive of that effect in previous videos, like female tier lists and whatnot. It's specifically mostly towards infantry female builds, because you're not getting any stats at all. But there is value in that snowboard active castings, especially at F, uh, the F5 levels, of course. When you start having things like Cersei to benefit more from the snowball more and more. So I've done a bit of maths down here to you, try and help visualize just how much these coefficients are going to be helping you in fights. I remember when I go over these maths, this isn't all the weapon will be contributing. You can have base attack on it. You'll be rolling up higher and higher cavalry attack stats on it also as it goes up the levels. So it isn't just the commander damage that is being increased. There is more things that will be getting improved alongside that. When we look at this, I'm going to be using this free 10% commander damage uh, value. So that's quite high budget with a level 9 strong assault and the premium casino castle skin. So these maths won't be gospel. It's just a frame of reference to uh, try and help visualize it, if nothing else. I list here the number of average active castings at the first second according to each tier of uh, Layla, according to her variables, because that will be used down here when looking at how or by what percentage your commander damage will increase because of this. But something to keep in mind again when doing this maths is the Salma weapon modifier will only affect the Salma initial procs. When you proc it at one second and then Layla reprocs it, that will then be exempt from the additional damage coefficient. So as another means to help visualize this, you can sort of envision something like 310% commander damage as 3.1 normal attacks. It's not that simple in practice because of things like multiple lines and other factors, but that is what I'm going to use for the mathematical simplicity. This point, if you didn't already know, running multiple lines with commanders that use their active abilities will actually reduce the amount of commander damage they do. The reason for this is the formula that is used to calculate commander damage, to the best of my knowledge at least, will total up the attack stats of all participating troops on your side and then divide it by the number of different troop types there. So the best way I can explain this is say you have 1 million troops and you have 1 million infantry, they will just deal the 310% modifier off that infantry's attack stats, basically. If you're running inf cav instead, and you have, say, 500k of each, what it will do is add up the 500k infantry stats, then separately add up the 500k cavalry stats, add them together, and that will approximately be around the same ballpark as the totaled up infantry stats. Maybe if you have more cav stats, it will be slightly higher, but it will be about the same because it's the same number of troops, but then it will divide it by two. So it's potentially a bit of a flawed algorithm, but it's just how it works. And you have to be aware of that if you're running female and you will want to be running mono at every opportunity because of this commander damage formula. The easiest way to visualize it is one line, does 100% commander damage, 2 does 50% commander damage, 3 does 33%, and 4 does 25% commander damage. Slightly besides the point though. So as stated, the Salma weapon only affects the first 5 actives, or more specifically, the actives before getting reprocked by Layla. So with this 310% commander damage value, this will be about 1550% commander damage. When we then put that 
through the damage coefficient increases of the 1, 2, and 3 star weapons, you will have these values here. And if there's going to be any takeaway from this video, it will probably be this box here as the easiest way to visualize this. These are very specific testing scenarios, so you'll have to take it with a grain of salt. But pretty much, compared to the base weapon at least, because these will all be slightly higher than is actually listed here when compared to no weapon at all because of the 80% proc rate. It's just very hard to do the maths for that considering how the, the actives that don't get cast there will be cast at 40 seconds. I have no idea how to math that out. So it will be a bit higher listed than this. And because of that, I think you can sort of roughly envision this as a one-star Salma weapon will give you basically the equivalent increase of an additional commander using their active ability. Two-star will almost be two more commander actives being cast, and three and four-star will near enough be three additional active castings in terms of additional damage onto what the damage would have been otherwise. And that is quite a significant damage increase, so if we use this normal attack comparison just as a means of envisioning this having a three star salmo weapon or even a, let's say two star salmo weapon this is approaching the point of normal attacking someone for one second without taking any losses on your side at all it's like having a three second of normal attacks before they can even have an opportunity to fight because it's happening in that first second where they won't have any damage sources themselves so this is actually very significant in terms of damage snowball, and this is why I think this is the key point of this weapon. I have some more maps here that provide percentage increases that you can linger on if you want. Basically, when accounting for Layla reprocs also, a 3-star Salma weapon will be increasing your commander damage by these numbers according to no Layla weapon, and then a 4-star Layla weapon also. And the numbers here, in terms of percentage increases, aren't crazy. I do think this bit here is the best way to visualize this. And then down here is about the 4-star recast interaction. So this is why I mostly see fixated on with this weapon, is people say, oh, we get more active castings with a 4-star Salma weapon, and that's going to give me more wildfire procs, and this and that. Unless I'm really missing something, I, I don't think this is ever going to be very useful, because when you think it through practically, when are you ever going to kill a lineup with one commander active at the first second of the fight? Like That is going to be such a niche scenario, where you're into like 10k troops in GB, where you're into 100 buffer troops in a front line in UT or something. If you're facing someone who's running a mono formation and they're about equal strength to you, this will 100 times out of 100 be genuinely like useless. And that's fine because you're still getting the additional damage from the damage coefficient and you cut out the RNG that you have at base Salma. But if you're buying this to four star expecting more actives because of this text here, it's, it's not going to happen. The only damage source that hits before Salma procs, as far as I know, is Daenerys' dragon. So you could hit a huge Danny proc at one second, maybe when her weapon comes out, and then hit a, a Salma active into a lineup. And maybe if they're like way weaker than you, you could get a reproc off that. But if they have any respectable number of like participating troops, this is just impossible in practical situations. It reads good, but when you actually think it through practically, when is it ever actually going to give you any value? Maybe I'm wrong with that, but when I think it through, I can't see it ever being hugely useful personally. So all in all, Summer Weapon is very good, but maybe for reasons that people don't talk of the most, its core benefits are removing the RNG for sure, because you get guaranteed value in this case. You remove the, the disarm on yourself, but then the increased snowball you'll get through the first second of the fight through this. I mean, a 3-star Samuel weapon with this is approaching 2 seconds of unanswered normal attacks, just for free at the first second of the fight, 
which is very, very significant, and in my opinion, just vastly superior to this recast text. Because of that, by the way, I would not rush upgrading it from 3-star to 4-star, because all you're getting is that recast proc, plus the additional stats and the army size, of course, but I don't think it's a massive, massive priority to upgrade when you already have it at 3-star. For female builds, of course, this is going to be staple. Getting it to base, at least, especially if you're running cav, at least, will be very good. If you're not running cav, I would probably say it'll be better to have a different unit type with base attack in this place instead. Depends how high you're leveling it and how high the alternative base attacks you could swap in would be. If you're running like female spear and you have a 10 spear base attack, but you have a 2 star Salma weapon, that 10 spear base attack is going to be way, way better than anything this will be giving you when you account for it across 40 seconds of a fight. So all in all, is it good? Yes. Is it amazing? Eh, bit situational. I don't know. What do you think?